This is the City Business Festival and is brought to you by Absa Bank Ghana Limited with support from GIPC. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is the City Business Festival Agribusiness Forum brought to you by Absa Bank Ghana Limited uh, with support from GIPC. Now, when we say agribusiness, what do we mean? And how do you start a career in agribusiness? How do you understand, how well do you understand the value chain? Animal husbandry, land acquisition, commercial farming. How well do you understand all these to make an informed decision to start your journey in agribusiness? This is what we are talking about today on the City Business Festival. And our guest in studio, we have two, and we have two via Zoom. In the studio, we have Mr. William Nete. Mr. William Nete is the head of agribusiness for Absa Bank Ghana Limited. He's also been working uh, in the agribusiness value chain for the past two decades, over two decades, actually. He's worked with the IF, IFAD, he's worked with uh, the USAID and other brands. Mr. Nete, welcome to the City Business Festival Agribusiness Forum. Thank you very much, Kodi. I hope you are I'm well. I'm happy to be here. I'm very well, thank you. We, we heard you on the City Breakfast Show this morning talking about financing for agriculture. That was quite insightful. Yeah. Are we getting more from you here? Yes, we are. Great. And thank you for the time. Now, the other guest with us in the studio is a researcher in animal science. She works with the CSIR, Animal Research Institute. If you go to the institute or the industry, they call her the rabbit madam because her research is primarily in rabbits, but she knows a lot about animal husbandry. And she's here to also share insights and some advice with us so that together we can start our journey into animal husbandry. Miss Dorisia Ose, welcome to the forum. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you are well. Yes, I am. And how is the CSR um, in this particular period? Well, we are we are coping. Mm. Mm. We are coping and following um, you know, our precautionary measures and continuing with our work. Great stuff. Mm -hmm. Now on Zoom, we have two guests joining us. One is the 2009 National Best Farmer. He's also one of the biggest mango and coconut farmers in Africa. He's been doing this for years um, and he does a lot of work in the agribusiness space across Africa. Mr. Davis Nakobo, 2009 National Best Farmer, is our other guest on the City Business Festival Agribusiness Forum, joining us via Zoom. And we also have Mr. Ken Adi. He also has 30 years' experience in agri and agribusiness. He's currently an international agri consultant, and they both join us from Zoom. Um, Davis and Ken, welcome to the forum. Thank you, Kojo. Thanks for having us. Um, uh, Davis, how are you? Um, we know that uh, there's COVID, there's a lot of challenges. You are an exporter. How has business been for you so far? Okay, so thank you very much. And let me uh, say good morning to your cherished viewers and listeners. Uh, <coughs> okay, I think we have um, a challenge with Davis's link. Uh, we'll get back to him. But Ken is also on the line, and we are going to start our conversation right away. Now, a lot of the topics and a lot of the times when we talk about business and making money and generating wealth, um, a lot of us don't think that agribusiness is really a gold mine. And if you read the literature and you follow what is happening, agribusiness is really a gold mine. Now, for, the, for this part of the conversation, I'd like our panelists to share with us from their own experience. Is agribusiness worth entering into? If I have money to invest, if I want to do something with my life, if I want to create a new career path, is agribusiness the way to go? I'll start first with William Nete. Is agribusiness a gold mine from where he sits? Absolutely. Agribusiness is a gold mine and it creates opportunity for you as an individual and for the nation. We all know of Ghana's agriculture and how we've been we've been in agriculture for a long time and that forms a major part of uh, of our uh, GDP. Uh, Agribusiness is what provides us a lot of a lot of the forex even that 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 we we, we do get and to go into agri agriculture 
or agribusiness, you should be ready to, to, to go in fully. Um, for an individual going in, what are you looking for? Are you prepared for it? Have you prepared your mind for it? And so these are the questions you need to begin to ask yourself whether I'm ready to go, go in there and, and fully be dedicated to it. Because if you are not, you are going to run into, into problems. And people have run into problems, and that's why they will tell you that, no, don't go into agribusiness. But I think that it creates a, a good place for you to invest. You need to understand the value chain, as we've mentioned. So what is the value chain? What are you going into? Is it crops? Is it animals? And then once you understand that, you begin to look at your market. I'm sure uh, other speakers will, will talk about that. And then you go on to look at your financing. And the financing bit is uh, usually what comes to mind is, uh, where do I get the financing? From right away, we go to the bank. Is it the right place to go at the start of your business? You need to look at that. There are various options that you can look at, uh, and that in itself would help your business to take off and to, to grow to a point where, where banks and other financial institutions would come after you. So I think that agribusiness provides a, a platform where you can go out there and, 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 and make the best out of it. Of, Great. Of it. There, there are some industries that usually are specialist industries, so the <coughs> entry barrier is really high. From your experience, is agribusiness something that creates an opportunity for all? Can anybody at all decide to enter agribusiness and be successful in that space? So, so I work for APSA. Mm -hmm. in, in APSA, we are seeking to connect people's dreams to and opportunities that they have to financial services so that they, these opportunities can, can come to life. And if you are someone going to agriculture, for us, we think that when you are dreaming, you should dream big, mm -hmm. but you should start from somewhere. So depending on how much you have, you want to look at where you want to enter. There are other industries that you can't, you can't enter right away. In agriculture, you can start. You can start if you're farming, I mean, on a, a smaller acreage, and then move on to a bigger acreage as you look at, or you get to understand all the dynamics involved in, in, in agriculture. So I think that there are various levels within the value chain that you can plug in that will make it easier for you to, to go on. And, and, and we'll share that as we go on. Mr. William Nete is the head of agribusiness as, at APSA Bank Ghana Limited. Now with oh. APSA Bank, you can do business even in this pandemic era, and you can always see safe with the services that they have. Just download the new APSA Bank app to check your balances. You can pay your bills, you can transfer money, and shop online. So always stay safe with APSA Bank <coughs> and follow them on social media for more updates and for more services um, when it comes to APSA Bank. Now, the Ghana Investment Promotion Center also wishes to inform its cherished stakeholders and clients of its continued services, including new registrations, company renewals, exemption processing, automatic expatriate quota applications, and a lot more. For further information, just contact them at PR at gipc.gov.gh. That is PR at gipc.gov.gh or follow any of their social media handles on Facebook, GIP, Ghana GIPC, Twitter, GIPC Ghana, and on Instagram to get to know more about what the GIPC is doing. We've got over 60 people on Zoom also watching and interacting with us. They also get the opportunity to ask questions and contribute to this conversation. It's our conversation. You can also send us messages. The WhatsApp line is scrolling on the screen over the link um, that you are viewing the show on and you read your messages. Now let me come back to our panelists for us to delve deeper into agribusiness. William says that ag uh, agribusiness, agriculture is a gold mine. Um, Doris, you are in the animal space. Is there something there to dig to create wealth for all? Um, yes, yes. Um, you know, when we talk of agribusiness, um, I am an animal bias person, mm -hmm. so I'll speak on that. Uh, it's a very viable and profitable venture to go into. You see, if you look at our over 30 million population with our uh, meat consumption, the per capita meat consumption of about 14 uh, kilograms compared to the average world, which is about 43 uh, kilograms. Um, if you look at that, you know, we have a huge uh, gap of about 600 tons a 600 metric tons of meat consumption, you know, a huge uh, a gap. 
And with this huge gap, if, if someone goes into the animal, uh, uh, animal rearing, uh, it will be very profitable, you see. And because of that, we have to encourage the youth not only the youth, those who want to go into to animal rearing, you know, to go into it because when you go, you know, it creates employment, uh, wealth creation, and also it 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 addresses uh, food and uh, uh, the food and uh, food security. Yes, the food issue. security. Yes, so it's, it's it's very profitable, and then if you look at. You know, if, if you want to go into it, sometimes you don't even have to go in from start to the end. You can start someone pays, for example, if you go into piggery, you, 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 you start, uh, you get your winners, someone comes for them, ra raise them uh, to slaughter, and then, you know, another person comes for them and then processes them to the market. Mm -hmm. You see, so it's, it's, it's very viable. So there are different levels yes, that you can engage levels. in animal husbandry. Yes, yes. And from your example, the per capita meat consumption in Ghana is 14 it's kilograms. It's about 14 kilograms. And uh, average should be 44. The average is about 43, the 40, world. 43, yes. the world. So it yes. means that we are um, more nourished when it comes to protein. Yes. And yes. there's a big opportunity to yes. produce more for people. Yes. To, yes. And you also import a lot of protein stuff, right? Yes, we do. Okay. When I come back to you, I want you to tell me some of the things that we can easily do to enter into animal husbandry and the opportunities in there. There are people who want to enter, but they don't know what they can do. So when I come back to you, I want you to break those things down for me. I'll go to uh, join our panelists on Zoom, and I'll come to you, Ken, first. Ken, you have spoken about agribusiness being a gold mine. Give us an overview of the various opportunities within the space that any person at all who desires to create a new career in agribusiness can easily jump into to create something for themselves. All right, good morning, Kujo, and uh, thanks for this opportunity again. And uh, I say hello to all your viewers and listeners. You put a question right. Um, you know, during my last engagement with you, I made it clear to you that, look, uh, frustrated people do not go into agriculture. Those who are not business-minded do not have to go into agriculture. And nobody should see it as a last resort to an end meet. That is just to tell you that if we start with the nations abroad, their success stories has come as a result of the fact that they all eat well and are healthy and, um, and can go on to generate everything within their various societies to get to where they are at the moment. Still referring to what happened way back to history, our forefathers went to work on plantations and this was self-sufficient at the moment. And what are we doing to ourselves? We cannot even produce enough to feed the nation, even to the extent that we have difficulties in running our export programs. With all these gaps, it's no less saying that agriculture or farming is something we should all open our eyes wide to have a look at. I mean, you appreciate all the opportunities we are, opportunities we are discussing about at the moment. From uh, short-term production, medium-term, long-term, even up to processing and uh, marketing. We have a range of activities in which if anybody is well trained and made to think deep into it, we'll never run into a loss. we we'll just have success stories. But that, that's what I have to say in the interim. When I come back, I also take thoughts from you as to some of the, you just mentioned short-term things that you can do in agribusiness to start you off. There are lots of people who call and send messages to us at CTFM and CTTV since we launched Operation Feed Yourself. I want to do something in agribusiness. I'm a banker, but I don't know what to do immediately uh, so that I can really enter this space. I'm a student. I'm unemployed. I want to start something in agribusiness. 
What are some of the easy things? And I'm using easy because we know that with every business, it's capital intensive if you want to go big. But with the least capital, what are some of the things that people can easily do and scale gradually in agribusiness? When I come back to you, I'll take your thoughts on that. But Davis, you are the, like, if you're not the biggest um, coconut farmer in Ghana or the biggest mango farmer, I don't know who else is. You are the biggest mango farmer in Ghana. Yes. Agri is a gold mine. But how do we approach it? For people who want to go into commercial farming, for you, I'm going straight to the point because it's, it's, it's quite a lot of information when it comes to your area. How should people prepare to go into commercial farming if they so wish to do that? Okay, so first and foremost, let me quickly touch on what uh, Ken just said. And uh, I want to re-emphasize on that, that the agric is not for the, the less fortunate ones. That is not an alternative, that if you don't have any job to do, that is where you venture. And as a country, I think that has been the perception, and that is why agric is becoming more of a problem for us. And again, uh, a lot of people associate agric with risk, but I don't think that any other business is insulated from risk. And then the way they, it depends on the way you handle it, you manage it. That is when the, the, that, that thing counts. That is what makes you a very good business person. Yes, uh, agric is viable, uh, is profitable. Uh, when you get it right, when you get it right in the sense that, you know, the when people talk about agriculture, agribusiness, they narrow down to only uh, the production and cultivation, but then there's a whole value chain where one needs to fill gaps. So if you omit any of the gaps, it becomes a problem. And that is where, uh, as a country, what some of the things we need to look at. Commercial farming is not as easy as uh, you think. I don't want to uh, look like, because everybody says agric is lucrative, uh, it is happening for everybody to move in when you've not really uh, conscientize yourself well or you don't have the passion to do that because, like I said, the risk involved is very high and you need to be very ready to be able to absorb shocks when it happens. Uh, for instance, um, we, we have, let's even start from the production, the online tenant system. Uh, I think the urban dam methodology uh, is, should be different from the rural because you see, first and foremost, land acquisition becomes one of the critical mass uh, when you want to go into commercial uh, farming. If, if production is what you are talking about, then it becomes a critical mass. But the issue here is uh, if you bought land from somebody, you need to document it before you move on to do whatever you have to do. And uh, again, going through the process of land commission alone is not an easy task. A survey through land commission and registration is not an easy task. And that uh, fundamentally deters people from even moving to the next step. The next one also is how to determine whether the land and whatever you are going to cultivate uh, is right. And that is where the soil scientist comes in. So if you skip that gap, then it becomes a problem where you end up investing, but then won't recoup whatever you're supposed to recoup. So from the one, you, 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 you've you lost some some margins, and that is it. So, and be, be, aside that, you, you need to move on. Maybe if you want to do like production again, you need to look at the source of the seas, all your inputs to, to, to talk about. And this is where I think that the value chain is huge, where we need to get people uh, to, to invest in. Uh, I was just uh, uh, reminiscing something. In 2018, the, how call it, the African Competitiveness Report uh, stated clearly that 50% of uh, uh, African labor uh, is, is being done by agriculture and agribusiness for that matter. And, uh, and also it employs about 64% of the rural folks. So that tells you that it is a huge thing that we have to uh, consider. Then look at a country like Ghana where 2016 alone we imported to Mantos worth 90, $99.5 billion from Burkina alone. If <laughs> you understand me. So that tells you, and if you look at the our tomato importation, 90% of our tomato that we consume here is being imported. Uh, is it a case that we don't have the land? Is it a case that we don't have the human resource? Is it a case that we don't have the expertise to do that? The answer here is no. If you talk about a skill set. That is where I would say that, look, uh, unlike the other uh, employment or all other jurisdictions where the artisans are exposed to some of the training 
agri sector wasn't so. But then recently, there's this skill set, uh, the skill council development, where uh, they are trying to also make sure that we get to all those people involved. Once you get everything clean, then that is where you you you, you can get it. And again, um, a funding. You see. It, we shouldn't run away from funding when we're talking about agriculture. And for me, I've said it over and over. I used to bring the banks. But I think that the banks are taking care of you and I's money. So it becomes difficult for them to also, uh, at the end of the year, not declaring a dividend or not telling us that they don't make, they didn't make any profit. And so the onus lies on government to, to build captains of the industry. I mean, invest huge. I have seen tremendous investment on the successive government. If you look at the rice sector now, I've seen that they, they a lot of improvement. They've done a lot. And these are some of the things I think we need to look at when you want to go into a uh, set. Because somebody, you advise somebody to go into commercial farming, the person goes back, uh, gets a, a huge loan. Maybe it could be a loan from outside. I mean, uh, uh, invest the money in, in, in and it becomes a problem. And these are some of the things we need to look at. So the, all the gaps, we need to make sure that all the gaps are sealed. Uh, we, 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 we cross all the T's and all the I's. Once we're able to do that, then that is when uh, confidently somebody will say that the commercial farming is viable. Yes, it okay. is viable with what we are doing because mm. uh, we produce sogo, we produce maize, and other things for Guinness, and uh, the mangoes and other things. So in case we have a shock, we have what to follow. Because mangoes, for instance, it's very lucrative, but for the past four or five years, we had issues with the climate change. Then all of a sudden, just as we got an antidote to it, we started having a BBS issue. Mm -hmm. And these are bacteria issues which need proper and 100% government intervention. 100% government intervention. You understand? Because in any case, whatever we export. Uh, high our or uh, increase our foreigners and then the cost of depreciation of the um davis for more but your initial submission i've heard two things if you want to go into farming or agriculture get land and if you get land get secure land and find mm -hmm. a viable funding source and then yes upgrade your skills and do it right so these it's are not, it's not, it's not, it's not about getting the secure. The secure land here means that you also need to test the soil mm -hmm. and make sure that whatever you are going to produce uh, will, 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 will give you the maximum returns. Great. I'll come back to you again for some more insights into things that people could grow. People ask us a lot about cash crop. Oh, mango. Oh, everybody says, let's do mango. How do we approach it? Cashew, coconut, all the cash crops and the opportunities in the value chain for everybody to jump in. I'll come back to you. And then maybe you could also give us some ideas about getting ready for the export market because you do that a lot. And if you are going to be wealthy people from agri we just don't need to look at the local markets but the export market. So we'll come back to you. But when Davis was speaking, William, and you mentioned funding, you were smiling. You are the money man and you are the funding man. I will also be getting ideas as to how to approach funding for your agribusiness from you. But before I come back to you, let's go to Doris. Animal husbandry. What can we do in animal husbandry? We know of poultry. So in Ghana, when you talk about animal husbandry, people will mention poultry first, maybe sheep, goat, cattle. But what are the various things in the animal husbandry space that every person who wishes to go into should know before they make a decision? See, you, want, you need to know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of business you want to venture into? Do you want to go into the short term, medium term, or the long term? Yes. You can do either of them or combine. Uh, with the short term, as you mentioned earlier, poultry. You know, poultry, um, if you, okay, let's say quills. Yes, mm -hmm. quills is part of poultry. If you want a quick returns on your investment, you can start going into quills because they start laying as early as six weeks. Okay. As early as six weeks, quills start laying. And then if you go into poultry, uh, the broiler, within between six and eight weeks, you can get your 1.5 to 1 to 1.5 uh, kilogram of uh, broiler meat. Okay. And then um, 
about eight to nine weeks, you can get what you know the one point five to one point sorry one to one point five kilogram is normally the grilled ones that people use. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you want to have household ones, uh, you can go into that. So that one takes about six to seven to eight weeks. That one you can get about 2.5 to 3 kilos. Okay. And then also the, there are the cockerels, the mills. Mm -hmm. They are very meaty. They take about uh, 10, 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. Those ones you can cut them. You know, the thigh, the wings, and then the sell breasts. them. Yeah, the mm -hmm. breast and then sell them. Apart from poultry, you can also go into a uh, rabbit and grass cutter. Okay. Rabbits and grass cutter. Rabbits mature and grass cutter mature at around five months. You can mate them. And then, you know, with rabbits, within 30 days, 31 days, they give you an average of uh, seven, uh, seven bunnies, seven cats. And, and it's, you know, if you keep on, let's say you have one rabbit, it gives you uh, seven, let's say averagely five. So every 30 days, they'll give. Uh -huh. So, uh, no, no, but they, they have to... Uh, uh, okay breastfeed mm -hmm. uh, rest before so let's say if if they get pregnant four times one rabbit alone can give you 20 uh, 555 five, five, 20 mm -hmm. so if you have about 10 or 20 you can get a lot of rabbits and then make money out of it with the pigs when it comes to pigs pigs uh, a winner of about 15 kilos costs uh, 200 Ghana cities and you need about 250 Ghana cities to feed that winner to about 60 kilos. And then that takes about four to five months. Okay, and then the, when it, get, it attains 60 kilos, you can sell it for about 600 Ghana cities. You see, so if you take your, what you, you spent, mm -hmm. you know, you have a profit of about 150 Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. And then you take out your cost and all those things. So these are the, let's say the short term things. But then if you want to go into the medium, you can go in for 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 the sheep and goats they are also profitable the medium uh, and then the long term is the cattle mm -hmm. you know the cattle you can get your returns on your investments uh, from about three years but before you go into that you will need to have your business plan in place you have to know what you want to do uh, how you want to produce them who you are producing for, okay, and then the market. Okay. okay. Mm. So you have to know all these things apart from the land. Uh, he's talking about the land mm -hmm. and issues. And then with animals, you need land with access water. Doc, um, I'm calling you Doc because I foresee you becoming... Mm -hmm. And then we'll go for a break. When we come okay. back, we'll continue with uh, the insights you are giving us. So for sure... grass cutter and pigs. I have even forgot the layers. The layers too. Yes. Okay. For, the for they consist and then for long term you can do cattle and you are giving us some more insights as to how to package mm -hmm. your business plan to win in that particular area. Mm -hmm. We'll go for a quick break. When we return, we'll get some more insights from William Nete and Doris Yaose giving us insights as to how we can create a new career in agribusiness for ourselves and create wealth for the country. We'll be right back. with biometrics now you can access the APSA mobile banking app using your fingerprint or facial recognition download today that's Africanacity that's APSA Felicia 
Bertram Essi, as founder and CEO of Home Foods Processing and Canwood Limited. Home Foods Processing and Canwood Limited is an agro-based business. We add value to agricultural produce. We started in 1995 on a kitchen table. We've grown into four factories now, adding value to agricultural produce. We've gotten to the stage whereby we want to be in a corporate level and uh, our revenues have grown to the stage whereby we need equity partners. So hopefully, with the help of GIPC, we can attract both local and foreign partners so that together we can grow in Ghana and grow with Ghana. Shop online, get free swipes, and enjoy greater security with a card that turns banking on its head. That's Africanacity. That's Absa. Welcome back. This is the City Business Festival Agribusiness Forum. And we are talking about how you can create a career in agribusiness, how you can also create wealth for yourself. The Business Festival is sponsored by Absa Bank Ghana Limited, supported by GIPC. Your comments are welcome. The um, WhatsApp line is on the screen, 055-058-5832. Send us your comments. We'll be uh, glad to read them and your questions as well. And you can also tweet or share on social media. The hashtag is City Business Festival. We'll be glad to carry your comment along to, uh, into the studio for our guests to answer them. We also have over 60 people. Uh, they also get the opportunity to ask questions and also participate in this conversation. I'm coming back to you, Doris. So you started off telling us about the opportunities in animal husbandry. You mentioned quills, broilers, layers, cockerels, rabbits, um, grass cutter pigs for short term, sheep, goats, cattle, um, sheep and goats for medium term, cattle for long term. For a novice, how do I um, enter this particular space? Um, before I, I go on, I would like to also talk about, you know, when turkeys and ducks mm -hmm. are, are red for festive occasions, mm -hmm. you know, so the turkeys can also, the turkeys and then the ducks are also a short term venture you can go into. Yes. Um, you see, before you venture into animal rearing, first of all, you need to have the skills. You can't just go into it without knowing anything about it. You need to have the skills, the technical knowledge, how to go about with things. And then you need to have your business plan. And with the technical skills, Animal Research Institute, we have training models for farmers, for people who want to venture into agribusiness. So when they come there, we can train them. We have the different models. So, um, you know, you come, you have your training with your business plan and everything. You will need land. Mm -hmm. You need money. Mm -hmm. You will need uh, where to get your input supplies. All those things, because without them, you cannot go into animal uh, uh, rearing. You need to have all those things together. And if you have a very good business plan, you can even go for a loan at the bank. Because the business plan will address what you want to do, how you want to do it, who to produce for, and all those things. So you need to have all these things in place before you can go into a business venture. Okay, mm. So these are the things you need to have. So, so the Animal Research Institute can train people to go into any of the um, um, animal husbandry practices. So if I, if I want to do cattle, you have a training program for that? Yes. Rabbitry, yes. It, all the things you mentioned, you have yes, training programs yes, for that? Yes, we have training programs for all that. How long on average does it uh, take for somebody to be trained? Because, look, I'm sitting at home, I'm unemployed, I want to start something or... I'm a banker like Mr. Nitti and I want to quit and I want to, how long would it take to train me to prepare me for this um, venture? 
Uh, we have an intensive one-week training. Mm -hmm. Intensive one-week training. Uh, you have your theory. You have all the practicals and, uh, you know, what you need to know. Mm. You have all of them before you, you come. But we, we, we train. Mm. And then sometimes it depends on the person. Sometimes you, you want to have the one-week intensive training, but someone will want to go for more than one week. So two weeks, we can also do a, a training for, for, and for how, people. And how available are the inputs? For example, quills. You mentioned quills. If I needed um, some quills to start my business, how available are the inputs? Um, and, and, and how, how expensive are they as well? Are they cheap? Quills are not expensive. And there are farmers who have the... How, like, they hatch them. Mm -hmm. You know, there are farmers around who hatch them, and we work with them closely. So if you want some, we can. And Animal Research Institute, we even hatch some. We have. Mm. You know, we have quails. We have all the animals I mentioned. So if you want some and you come, we, we can get them for you. Okay. Yeah. Now let me go to uh, Mr. Ken Adi. I'm, I'm reserving the rest for <laughs> William because she's mentioned business plan and money. I know Ken also mentioned business plan and money. Money would come. Um, <laughs> Davis mentioned Funding. money. So I want to package all the money things and throw at you. So she'll stop a moon soon <laughs> because I'll, I'll be coming to you. Yeah. Ken, let's talk about crop. Um, 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 Davis said that we imported about $99 million worth of tomatoes into the country. And these days, I've seen a lot of people trying to venture into the vegetable farming. If I want to venture into vegetable farming. What should I know? And what are the types of vegetables that do well in Ghana? Can you share some of them with us? How long it takes to, 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 to harvest, let's say, one cycle. If I'm going to top tomatoes, am I doing it for a year? Is it short term? Is it medium term? Ken? Well, uh, it's good this question is coming up. Um, vegetables definitely are all short-term uh, products in agriculture. The maximum time they're going to stay with you is uh, about three months. And uh, we have some which matures from a cell year six weeks to eight weeks. By, by the third month, your, your distance is gone off. And there are, there are others which extend to about six months. I mean, that's, that's the purpose especially and uh, as, as a starter if uh, looking at the type of land you have then especially if you come to somebody like me I'm first going to appreciate your level of uh, passion for coming to agriculture in the first place because uh, if you fall short of what I expect I mean uh, I might even discourage you because uh, <laughs> you don't have to go through my hands and also see. No. <laughs> so, I mean, let's, let's take something like uh, cucumbers and uh, okra. O okra, okra. They will mature within a period of six weeks. You are harvesting. You know, with cucumbers, just a can of about 100 grams will give you about 30 standard beds. And if you go through the normal best practices and start your harvesting. Be it in whatever time, especially even during the glass time when there are a lot of cucumbers on the market. You might come out with no less than about 2,000 Ghana cities out of just a 100 gram weight. Mm. So you can imagine if you are expanding it. Then you look at what you really want to gain out of this vegetable production you are, you are embarking upon. Are you going to appreciate the local market or you be driven into getting the, the vegetables out of this particular country? I'm glad Davis brought up this tomato issue. It might interest you to know that the major problem of the tomato issue in this country is about the type of nutrition we provide to our tomato. We have all the good seeds available now, I mean, in terms of the hybrids and whatnot. But unfortunately, 
farmers are not applying the correct nutrition to the tomato. Our tomatoes have serious short shelf lives. And uh, you might be surprised. There's a, there's a particular disease, which is a foregone conclusion in Burkina Faso, called the blossom and rot. It's very, very popular amongst, what do you call it, uh, <laughs> our farms in the country at the moment. And it comes at the tail end when your tomato is matured. That's when the distraction takes place. Well, come to think of it, our women leave Ghana going to Burkina Faso, get a tomato, the truck will develop a problem around Palu. It stays for about two weeks, and they get into a crowd with the tomato by the third week. But still, the tomato stays strong for them to be able to, uh, what do you call it, sell to the public. So obviously there is, there is a problem with how we are growing tomatoes and managing tomatoes in the country. Our, 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 I mean, we, 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 let me say we have, unfortunately, there are experts to pass on good practices, but then most of our farmers, unfortunately, uh, I mean, sorry for the word, are adamant to this particular situation. Can I'll they come to, to you on, on, on that bit? We will explore that bit. How to manage your farm to ensure you produce quality product. But let's yes. talk about. But, the but could you please, before I end, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would like to come in with the, something for the financial man. I'm actually not ending with you. Now I'm coming back to you, and then we'll move on to okay, that. Okay. So, so hold on. No, no, no. Me. But I just want to check the thing before I forget. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, we are all expressing the fact that agriculture is a risky area and all that. But today, courtesy technology, we are developing mitigating factors against all the particular risks. That's why we have hybrids. Even irrigation, we have, we have something we call solid rain with a protocol agriculture. We apply directly to the root zone of any crop. It absorbs water and uh, releases it slowly by osmotic pressure all these things are available so i want them to reduce the use of that particular word in the system as you know <laughs> risk 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 risk, risk. <laughs> okay that, that, that's well well noted but i'm still with you you've mentioned tomatoes you've mentioned peppers you've mentioned cucumber people ask us oh i want to go into vegetables and we all go for parties and go and eat at the hotels we eat salads and we see the assortment of vegetables and leaves and whatever in them what are the vegetables we can easily grow here you've given me three examples tomatoes peppers you mentioned okra and cucumbers can you list them for us for people to appreciate that in fact if you are eating this here or if you add this there we can still grow it here and there's an opportunity for that that's a tall list but let me start uh cucumber cabbage Carrots, onion, the peppers, French beans, Hips. cauliflower, I mean, there, there's a whole lot of them, you know. The hips. <laughs> It's, it's, it's interesting. So, and all <laughs> these can be grown here because sometimes we get the impression that some vegetables cannot do well here, others can do well here. So, um, I, I need you to give us a sense of the vegetables that really do well in our in our in our setting us in, in Ghana. Those, so that those people... are the ones I'm mentioning. Then okay. Let's go into the melons. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if I mention of watermelon now, most most farmers actually shudder because they produce and most of them go waste. You know which is quite unfortunate. But there are others which which uh, will be interesting to produce as to how they appreciate in prices, mm -hmm. especially for the foreign markets. Okay. Especially the, the Gallias, the, the Gallia melon especially. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so that's Kennedy giving us some insight. So if you eat tomatoes a lot, we can produce tomatoes here. And there's an opportunity of taking a chunk of the, a bit of the $99 million that we import from Burkina Faso, if you do it right. Peppers, cucumber, um, carrots, onions, cauliflower, French beans, melons, pineapples, um, they all do very well here. So if you want to go into that space, you may want to think about those and then invest in there. Later, I'll come to you, Ken.
for you to point then, out to then you. you don't forget uh -huh. about non, the non-traditionals you uh -huh. were asking me about something for the beginners mm -hmm. you know depending depending on the type of space they're, they're, they're available okay people could, could go into those ones too and 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 what are some of them uh like the snail rearing mm -hmm. uh crab production mm -hmm. uh mushroom production i mm -hmm. mean those ones can also be con considered for uh starters Okay, so later I'll be coming to you to give us a sense of where we can also get help if you want to go into vegetable farming and resources to enable us to be more productive. I'm coming back to you, Davis. Your mic is off, so please turn on your mic and um, let's talk about your side of the business. You are the big farmer. You do mangoes, you do coconuts, you do all these things. In the commercial agri space, you, you mentioned the value chain earlier. What can I do? If I tell you, Davis, um, I earn some 3,000 Ghana cities or some 10,000 Ghana cities in your space, I'm very interested. What can I do easily from, um, from scratch? Okay, so let, let me uh, clarify two points before I move on. The 99.5 million tomato importation assets in uh, 2018 was from only, uh, okay, how do you call it, Burkina. Yeah. That is one, one thing mm. we have to know. So. <laughs> That tells you, with, and like I said, 90% of the tomato we consume in Ghana uh, uh, are being uh, imported. It's not, so that tells you the sort of uh, job export that we, we, are, we are creating out there. Then, uh, and, and then again, uh, uh, Madam Livestock, I heard her talking about how your business plan, uh, then you move your, take your business plan to the banks. For load. Uh, I can tell you in reality, it's not that easy to just have a business plan and go to it. It doesn't matter whatever package you have, uh, it's not that easy. And uh, I'm, I'm talking from practical experience, and I, I know that a couple of people will say that if they will even do it, the interest rate alone and, and, and the time factor becomes one of the biggest challenges. Now, let me switch to uh, my side of business. Uh, I did mention of mangoes, uh, for instance, and the coconuts and other. But you were talking about if you have ten thousand Ghana, you want to invest commercial farming. I don't think ten thousand Ghana can can do anything on, on the commercial farming, and that is the reality. Because first and foremost, uh, to start the whole thing, you need to secure a market and have a contract. So granted that, uh, and that's it was gives you the drive to be able to produce whatever. You want to so in that case you are not going to do a smaller holder thing by doing just an acre or two but then you are going to blow into the hundreds and thousands uh, because you have uh, uh, the the, the uh, an insurance which is the how do you call it the the, the contract you have for 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 the market mm -hmm. so uh, it becomes pretty difficult if you really want to invest very very no, because commercial farming counts, it entails a lot of things where, like I said, the gaps need to be closed and the, the funding gap as well uh, needs to be uh, widened in terms of for you to be able to push in and get the returns. Because, you know, Ken said something about tomato and he was talking about the, that uh, most of our farmers, uh, they are not able to uh, complete their nutritional, I think, uh, activities in terms of them. This is where the skill set uh, gap is. Uh, and I tell you what, some of the farmers uh, know seriously. Others also think that what they were doing yesterday uh, is what pertains to them. Forgetting that uh, agriculture and business is uh, trending issues where day in, day out, you see different things coming on board. And that is where I think that we should be able to close our skill gap and make sure that we, we, we change the mindset of our smaller holder farmers to take agri as business. So in, in terms of commercial farming, yes, you, you, you can look at the, the maize, uh, the, the cereals to be specific, the maize, the soybean, the sorghum. And, but then if you are, want to do that, then you also look, need to look at the variety because, and where the market is. For instance, if you are going to supply to the breweries, uh, they wouldn't want to take the high protein maize. That, that is one thing you have to know. So if you sow a basampa for the breweries, uh, I don't think uh, any brewery will be ready to, to buy a from you uh, because that one, the high protein 
the protein is very high. Mm. If you look at so good, do they have the particular varieties they need to, they need in every way. If you go to the food chain, that is where you also look at what you have to produce to, to, to uh, the food chain. I'm looking also looking at, look, for, for the first three years, within the things like Mongo, the, the tree crops, you could do a couple of intercropping. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things, uh, the pattern of squash, for instance, is something that uh, has serious market potential with a better window. Because for instance, you know, uh, from the last stages of uh, the, the, the last quarter, from, let's take it from October, November going, uh, the, the European countries are unable to produce. So you, you, we can uh, fill in from uh, November, December, January, February, March, March, early April, then we stop mm -hmm. because uh, that is where the, the, the likes of UK, Europe, and everybody also moves in. So in that case, it becomes premium. You get high value. And uh, because the nutritional values are also very high, you know, the use of baby food and other things, I think our school feeding program can also map up the, the, the rest. So that we, because if you look at Ghana, our post losses alone is about 34%, not for one crop, 34% of agricultural produce. There are some wheat forms about $4 billion a year. And I think this $4 billion converted into content industries can produce a lot to, to safeguard the post-service losses. Mm. So uh, it is also important that uh, our people learn to, uh, the indigenous learn to eat what we produce here, patronize it, then uh, allow it to protect. Because in any case, we, 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 we are here talking about agriculture, seeking people to uh, put in their money. But, but then, we, we are the, here, uh, once doing that, we should also look at uh, curtailing the issue where we, we allow, we use Ghana as a dumping grounds for uh, produce from Europe, China, and other too, because they are highly subsidized. So it, it makes our uh, producers here very uh, uncompetitive. Mm -hmm. They, they, understand. they are highly, highly subsidized. So these are some of the things I think we should look at. Okay. Because they, I'll tell you, somebody should go and invest. The person goes back to go and bring huge money to invest. Then all of a sudden, we also still allow this uh, here to be used as a dumping ground for most of this. So I don't think it's fair. Okay. So yes, commercial farming is good. You need serious capital at a single digit rate. It's not a double, because the double is creating a lot of problems. Okay, I'll be coming back to you. You've, you've mentioned two things that are of interest to me. So when you plant, it's important so that you get value for your produce. If you plant and you are going to harvest at the bumper season, it means there is enough supply, so you may not get value. So you have to stagger your planting and look at the various seasons locally and globally so that you can uh, fill in when there is no glut, right? And then how you approach your agribusiness. Doris, your hand was up. Uh, you, you wanted to make an inter intervention. Mm -hmm. Pots. Yeah. You see, when you look at the this one, because I'm animal bias. Yeah, 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 you yeah. see, if you look at imports in mm -hmm. 2018, uh, we imported about six million cities of poultry into the country. Cattle, 120 million cities. Mm -hmm. um, pork, 13 million cities. Sheep and goats, about 14 million cities. Mm -hmm. And the total meat import was about 740 million cities in 2018 alone. Right. So if you look at the, as I said, the short, if you look at the poultry, mm -hmm. okay, we are importing a lot of meat. Mm -hmm. And then the medium term, which is the, the, mm -hmm. the rabbit, grass cutter, yeah. and then the pork, mm -hmm. the, the pig rearing, we are importing a lot. Mm -hmm. The long term, the long-term animals, you know, we imported about 55,000 cattle. We import about 55,000 cattle a year on wow. hoof. That is those that enter. Yes, you know, not, on the, hoof. not the killed ones. Not the killed the ones. The live ones. Yes, the live ones. Wow. You know, five, uh, 55,000 cattle. And then about um, 70,000 goats. 70,000 sheep and then uh, about uh, 100,000 um, uh, what a uh, sheep mm -hmm. no sorry uh, 70,000 sheep and then 100,000 goats mm -hmm. you know we put it on hoof 
Okay. And then apart from the hoof, we, we put all these meats into the country. Killed and dressed and packaged. Yes, yes the package and then they bring And then the sad thing is sometimes they are very old. Two years, three years, and then they bring them in and then we rush in for them. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think if we, if we really encourage the, the youth, we, mm -hmm. we let them know. It's, you know, a grape is, is a business. Yeah. As one of them said, you know, you don't go in if you are. You, know, you have to have the passion for it before you go into it. If you want to have the short-term one, then you go in for the poultry and then the quills. Mm -hmm. The medium, you go in for the rice. And then the, the long-term, you go in for the cattle. And then, you know, with your money and then the passion, with your management skills, practices and everything, taking care of them, and for taking care of their health, feeding them properly and everything. Uh, with your training and skills, uh, you make it. Great. So, so, so all this is business denied us because we are not taking it seriously enough yes. to rear these animals for our market. Yes. And for, for, for someone like me, if I cannot afford land now, looking at all the litigation and all the problems with buying land, can I start something at home and still make it profitable to put some extra money in my pocket? When it comes to animal husbandry. Yes, animal husbandry. You know, if you want to start something at home, you can, you can start with uh, rabbits. Mm -hmm. You can have rabbits at home. You can have grass cutter at your backyard. Mm -hmm. um, with pigs, you know, with this email system, you know, there's a... Um, your new technology created. Our new technology. Mm -hmm. You know, there wouldn't be no smell. You can have that. Maybe the noise will let your neighbors complain. But apart from the noise, you can have them... And then, as for the sheep and goats, you need to. <laughs> they will jump your walls. So. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of messages, and there are lots of people ready to interact with us. So um, we'll spend the next hour interacting in the studio and also interacting with our Zoom audience and reading your messages. I'll just run through some of the messages, and then I'll come for responses. But, William, there's a lot coming your way, because mm -hmm. all three have mentioned finance, and I've not given you the opportunity to break things down for us. Mm -hmm. So I'll be coming down to you. Now, uh, for example, this message from Melchior Avo, uh, somebody I know who is into hydroponics, says, Kojo, all the things your resource persons are saying about money, you know, it's not straightforward like that. <laughs> How can we get easy funding for the youth to do agri? Are the financial institutions willing and ready to help the youth who don't have collateral to venture into agri? That's a big question. Now, I'll read the messages, and when I come back, William, what I want you to do for us is to break it down for us how to approach the problem of funding, what are the opportunities, what must you do, how do you start. I'll come to you for you to break it down for us. And you have a lot of people watching us on Zoom. I'll be going to them shortly for them to give us a wave and get ready to join the conversation. But let me um, tell you that if you are thinking about getting banking services in a safe way, you need to download the new APSA Bank app to check your balances, pay bills, transfer money, shop online, and stay safe while banking with APSA. You can actually be in your house or your farm and transact all your banking services just with the APSA Bank app and not move an inch from your house or your farm or your office. So get the app today on your phone, for your iPhones, on your Android phones, and keep banking with APSA Bank Ghana Limited. Now, the GIPC also wishes to inform its cherished stakeholders and clients of their continued services, including new registrations, company renewals, exemption processing, automatic expatriate quota applications, and technology transfer agreement applications. You can get further information by emailing pr at gipc.gov.gh or go to any of their social media platforms, Facebook, Ghana GIPC, Twitter, GIPC Ghana, and Instagram, and they will assist you to get to do business with them in these pandemic times. We'll go for a quick break. When we return, I'll read your messages. We'll get our audience on Zoom to join us, and we'll pick up the conversation and give you more insights as to how you can start your agribusiness venture. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is the City Business Festival Agribusiness Forum. I'm learning so much from William Nete, from Doris Yaose, from Davis Kobo, and also from Kennedy. So we have one national best farmer, one international agri-consultant 
one animal scientist and we have one big man who controls the money when it comes to agribusiness and they are answering our questions. I'm going to go to William for his thoughts, how to approach the issue of funding. But before that, I want our guests on Zoom to just show their faces and give us a wave because they also have a lot of questions coming in. So all our guests on Zoom, give us a wave. I can see you. Mm -hmm. I can see you, Daledem. I can see you, Daniel. I can see you, Jeffrey. I can see um, Alistair, Michael, Edward, Arnold, Ophelia. I can see all of you. you. have over 60 people on Zoom, and we'll be bringing them into the conversation for them to also ask their questions on the City Business Festival. So, William, this question goes to you. How do we approach the issue of funding? if we want to start something small in agribusiness and scale it to something large. Thank you, Kuju. And like I said before, have big dreams and start. You can start small, you can start in a medium way. But like you said, how much money do you have to put in? And the money that you have to put in determines the level at which you would go. Um, our panelists have made great input into what we're doing. They, they, they've mentioned the, the passion that you need, and I want to emphasize that. They mentioned training, and I want to emphasize that. But also marketing. And when David talked about uh, button and scratch, I laughed. <laughs> because when you are talking about marketing, mm -hmm. it, it's key, because that's what drives whatever you are going to do. And before you come to the bank, you must have done your marketing. You must have know where you're produce are going, where your animals are going, all those things have to be settled before we even talk about financing. So butter not scratch was the in thing. I heard about it. I went around and I talked to somebody, oh, can I supply you butter not scratch? She said, oh, yes, yes, good. So I went to the north. I produced large quantities and then she brought them down to Accra. Then I went back to tell her, oh, I brought that said, oh, I have enough. So many people have brought this to you, so I can't buy. I have to go around and now looking for market. It all got spoiled. So the market is key. And those are the things that we show in the, the numbers that you are bringing to the financial institutions. I'm certain that financial institutions are willing to support the agribusiness uh, sector. We, we talk about risks and the challenges, but that, that's those are some of them are real and we need to address them we need to interrogate them we need to understand them and so like like has been said there's the need for research there's the need for you to talk to the advisors business advisors in agribusiness there's the need to understand very clearly where you are going from you know the start so when I walk into your office yes. with this business plan William Nete my name is Kojo Akotobo I'm going into Agric and I've done my business plan. I need 100,000 cities. What are the key things you look out for on the business plan? You've mentioned marketing. Would you look at, say, proof of the ownership of the land? Would you look at, say, the assets I have? What are the, the key things that should stand out in my business proposal before you agree to give me some money? We'll look at it in its entirety. Okay. We are not, we're, we're going to look at it right from the word go. So mm -hmm. even before we even go there, and it was mentioned, once you have your business plan, you can come to the financial institution. Is that all? Have you done your research? Are you aware of what you are going to? Have you gotten all your passion and everything well done, or your training and everything well done? Because those questions will be asked. They will mm -hmm. be asked because there are issues that when they are not dealt with, would be would be challenging so we would, would look at your your business the, if it's production or whatever stage of the value chain you are going into whether you understand the business mm -hmm. so, so if you have not researched it if you have not started it if you have not done it what is the basis so we need to you need to get to that point where you have you have researched well you have in some instances started and and how do you start that's the question where do you get the financing to start? And that's the question that most people are asking. When you are, you are beginning, so you are in the, what we call the seed stage. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the very basic stage. You are forming your ideas. You should go out there, identify where you can get market. You, you, you are forming your idea just to make sure that 
at the end of the day, this thing that I'm, 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 I'm going into will be worth the while. Then after that, you start it, you go into the early stage. That's what we call the very young business. Yeah. You, are, you are beginning to sell. You are looking for markets gradually. And then you need, you, you need some financing. And this financing, you can, you can look at various, various aspects. So it's not, the bank is not just the first option that, that you can look at. And, and Davis mentioned it, the rate at which we are, interest rates at which we are looking at. If you are going to do uh, business and you are expecting to have interest rates in the single digits, uh, that is, that is a, a real challenge yeah. in, our, in our situation now. So you need to look at where you are. We've talked about the seed stage. You, you're, you do the early stage. You have, you've started business. And then you go on to, you go on to, the, to the next stage mm -hmm. where you started business. You are selling. You are making money. And then you can, you can look for uh, working capital to support whatever you are doing, suppliers, uh, uh, giving you credit. Those are all options that you can look at. And then you now your business is matured enough. You are at a level where you can. Uh, that's a growth stage. You can you can go to the bank looking for uh, uh, debt, and then even in some instances look at equity, and, and and then you move on to the mature stage where your business is really stable, and and, and financing will be will be quite easier. So to for do. any young man or young woman watching this show right now, their first option for finance is not to walk into a bank but to think about what they want to do and look at their business in different stages from the startup stage to the growth so when you get to the growth stage and you want to scale and expand mm. and you have a lot of records to support mm. your application that's when you walk into a bank let, let me clarify uh -huh. you can walk you can walk into the bank at any stage uh -huh. you see but what is the the interaction mm -hmm. is it to go and look for a loan or is it to also gather more information and get understanding into what products are even available? So when you come to the financial institution, you can come, and there are, and there are different types of financial institutions. So we have the microfinance, we have the uh, uh, rural banks, we have the uh, commercial banks. We all are playing within the space just to make sure that uh, agribusiness is financed. Mm -hmm. But the point is, when you are coming in, what stage are you? Mm -hmm. What will be the discussion? Where? Do we do we come in? Have you gotten your your documents ready? So if you come to the financial institution, we may ask for a cash flow. So it's showing your projections over a period. Do you have uh, uh, some some data to show that this is what I've done that we can analyze to see the trend going forward? That in, maybe in the past two years or three years you've done something that we can we can follow as a trend, a and trend. then going forward. We, uh, uh, you are going to make some some more income, and based on that, we can we can uh, provide some support. Okay. Um, when you were talking earlier, I saw Davis raising his finger. Um, Ken also raises his, yeah, his hand. So, sure. Davis, you you want to make an intervention? Your, uh, please put on your mic and, and go ahead. Yeah. yeah so so uh, thank you very much. I, I think uh, I have two things here. Uh, uh, after. I'm calling it Absa because I don't want to use this thing because I want people to know that it comes from the bank. <laughs> and I spoke about uh, the secondary interest rate. I think I think is uh, is not feasible. That's what I heard. And then I, again, let me draw his mind to something that for a great financing and every financing, the risk becomes uh, the reason why the interest rate. Which, uh, gets out to mitigate up to 70% of the risk. So by, by, by default, I think that uh, if they were doing maybe 28%, then the 70% should have even brought them down very low. Plus, my 30% should have sent me to send the dicky straight. You understand me? <laughs> I think there should be conscious efforts as a country for us to be able to promote agriculture. Mm. And the, 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 the earliest we do that, the better. And then we should just forget it by calling Ghana as agriculture, whatever country. The next thing also is uh, uh, we don't talk about cash flow for two years, and that is where my difficulty is. If a commercial farmer, somebody came from overseas and said, "Look, I have hundred million dollars. I want to invest into a break and I start," uh, but then again, whatever you want to do for commercial, uh, A to maybe uh, D, 
you need more than 100. And if you don't do up to D, then you better not start at all. And I walked to the bank. How let you ask me of two years bank statement and go and bring my father and my grandfather, who I don't know, birth certificate, death certificate, and other things. <laughs> These are the changes I think that we should see in agri financing if we really want to build captains of the industry. Mm. Because it's a viable industry. But, but, but I bet you, if we don't take step to to uh, take the bull by the horn and also change the dynamics in funding, it becomes very difficult. Because we are asking the youth to come in. I think every youth, what they want to see is to buy a good car, uh, uh, live in a very good home. And for them, they, 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 they need some sort of comfort and some sort of, how do you call it, uh, assurance that things will go well. Mm. Again, he spoke about button as quite and I'm surprised he did that. For me, marketing alone is not a thing. You securing the contract, yeah. this is not that, becomes yeah. legal. And that is what I was expecting that uh, he, he was going to do. I, I think that's what he mentioned this morning on the City Breakfast Show. So if I can recap what you said on the City Breakfast yeah. Show. He said that one key thing that banks will always look out for is a contract. If yeah. you have a viable contract, it means that there's an assurance of revenue and cash yeah. flow. Yeah. That's number one. And he said that if anybody wants to start farming, they should look at how they can also raise some small capital on their own to start gradually so that whilst they scale, they would get support from outside. You mentioned cars, oh. Mr. Kobo. Uh, Mr. Kobo. There are people driving Mercedes Benzes in this city and driving... I'm using it as an example of a luxury car, not just the brand, right? There are people yeah. driving luxury cars in this city who sometimes may want funding to go into a Greek and they don't want to scale down the vehicle they are driving to realize some 40,000 cities that can, they can put into the business. But they would rather go to a bank to look for, for funding. So maybe as, as, as young people who also want to go into a Greek, we need to look at our lifestyles and cut back on some of the expenditures we make and also make our own conscious effort to save up to start small and put a, in place a business plan that will help us scale. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of questions, and I know all of you want to say other things, but let's also hear from... Hello, okay. I want to check in something. You, okay, I'll give you some 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, I want, want the banks to also consider uh, a particular thing. You know, any type of agricultural production has a gestation period. So they should factor that into whatever mm -hmm. support in terms of loans they want to pass on mm -hmm. to our farmers. Mm -hmm. So that if they want to retrieve their monies, they consider it. You know, if I do a short lived thing, maybe by the third month, they can start getting their money. If I do something like maize production, they should wait. Maybe after six months, they start collecting their money. They should appreciate that gestation period mm. in, in all their dealings. Okay, Ken, thank you very much. So um, it's time to get your messages, but uh, I'll give William a chance to uh, react or yeah, say just, just to say to mm -hmm. Ken that that we, we do that okay that we talk to you to structure some of these loans and even now with after we are looking at you know the tree crops and that have even longer gestation yeah. and, and and the time it takes to, to get to that point but there should be some kind of support that should come in and when Davis mentioned uh, yes we work with guess we work with other uh, uh, partners to ensure that we can bring down the the interest rates but you would all know that even the the GRR is is at 14.8 and so there should be something that is conscious from government from donors and all the partners we are working with to be able able to uh, 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 do something that would that will move the agribusiness uh, Great. forward. Now we have a lot of messages so I'm going to move to the messages and those on Zoom Please switch on your videos and be ready because I'm coming to you shortly. And those who are watching and for some reason your internet is not too good, get your internet up and running. Switch on your videos because I'm coming back to you, uh, Zoom to take your questions and your comments. But first question goes to Doris, yeah, or say, our uh, animal scientist. Please, where is the Animal Research Institute and how can I join the training? And it's from Danielle. Animal Research Institute is located at uh, Fafraha on the Dodua Road. So uh, when you pick a car, you know, when you get to Medina and then you ask, you can get a car. To uh, Animal Research. To Animal Research. And then when you get there, you get to the reception, you tell them what kind of training you want. They will direct you to 
to uh, the the right place mm. where you have to go for your forms and things. Yeah. Apart from Amasaman also wants to know from you whether um, you have training on snail farming and grass cutter rearing and if you can also enroll for training. You do have that, don't you? Yes, we have training for grass cutter. Mm -hmm. um, training for snails, no. Um, I think, uh, is it one of the research institutes does that? Okay. Yes, uh, yes, uh, in Kumase. Okay. But we don't have the training for, for snails. Okay. But we have for grass cutter. Okay. Now, Ophelia in Tema says, please, my question is, which type of crops grow well in the various types of soils? Sandy, clay, loam soil. And I'll be grateful if Madame Doris outlines the health benefits of rabbits. So the soil question would um, basically go to um, um, Ken. Davis or Ken. So I'll come back to you. The regional breakdown. So if I'm in the Volta region, what can I grow? If I'm in the Ashanti region, if you can put together your thoughts on summaries on that for us, we'll be really um, excited to get that. Now, Kevo in Accra says, the meat important, imported is significantly cheaper than locally produced meat. So how do we compete with the foreign market? I'm sure that um, our guests will give us some thoughts on that. And William says, good afternoon. Who should I contact if I want to learn about piggery and how to construct a modern uh, pig sty? I think it's the Animal Research Institute. So let me go on Zoom. I'll come back to the studio for reactions. So if you're on Zoom and you're ready, you give us a wave. I think there's a first hand up there. Uh, Jeffrey is ready to, to, to. So Jeffrey, I'll come to you first. Uh, your question or your comment, Jeffrey? Jeffrey, I think your mic is on mute, so if you can switch on your mic, um, Jeffrey. Yes, Kojo, can you hear me now? Yes, yes your mic is on thank now, you very so much. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I represent the Community Brokers Association of Ghana. We are also a business chairman, an agribusiness chairman. I'd like to make some submissions on the conversation on board. Um To William, my good friend, William and I were part of the after uh, Crystal Ball conference which took place. And a gentleman from AFC, Africa Finance Corporation, and this is in reaction to the comment from David on the interest rate for agribusiness lending. I think that the financial sector needs to come together with agribusiness groups uh, to work a, 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 a strategy in order to de-risk the, the, the sector. Because at the, at the after, uh, a finance person from AFC did indicate that risk is either perceived or actual. Currently, previous will bear me out as an, as, as, as an exporter that the challenge with the interest rate is that even the lending from the banks comes at a very high rate within the sub-region. So your cost of production is up your your uh, cost of lending is also up so sometimes depending on the crop you may be cultivated you become slightly uncompetitive if you don't have a direct off-taker contract so to upsell and to all the banks out there i believe we need to come to a table because um we also have gizzo gizzo is given a lot of cushioning and just like davis i wonder why with all the cushion being given by gizzo we still have interest rates so high. And the banks will keep on saying that risk in agribusiness is high. Because risk is either perceived or actual, we need to come to the table so that the banks let us know what they take as risk in terms of the criteria so that we can work to de-risk the sector. Seabag, mm. we are from the Ghana Commodity Exchange, and we're working with APSA. On that, on that score, APSA and some of the financial institutions working with firms who are into agribusiness on the exchange have their interest rates fairly lower than what is on the market and as a chamber that opens its uh, membership not just to people on the ghana commodity exchange we have some of our members who still complain about the level of uh, interest rates so that's my first comment my second comment is also to davis I believe you talked about the issue about land and land registration. Again, my advice out there to people who would like to launch into farming, 
again, I believe the conversation is on smallholder farms. No. Because we have the option of doing a backyard farm. I believe mm -hmm. a backyard farm wouldn't be for commercial purposes. So with that, you wouldn't have the challenges with land. But if you are actually wanting to do farm as a form of investment, as a form of generating revenue, and you, you have issues with land, and we see it a lot, people get to various districts, they work in Accra, and just like Kojo, you pass a comment that a city has launched Operation Feed Yourself. People come to you, I noted that down, and they say, how do we start? And the issue of our land. Well, we are com coming together with stakeholders and development agencies to see how we support farmers to actually register their land with land title. Because originally we have the Ebunu Ebusa system, which locally actually does work. But the issue about commercial farming is how do you legitimize the land that you have leased long term and have it registered for us within some process of some sort so that it becomes part of your documentation for some form of lending if you want to scale up that, to either go to a bank or to go for equity that sounds good jeffrey so I what we are going to do is when when you you finish your planning for this let us know at ctfm and cctv so we communicate it to people who have issues with land related um with, with land when they want to do agric so that they can also um, solve that particular problem that they have. I'll read a comment here. Now, this one says, uh, Kojo, I'm enjoying the City Business Festival here. Congrats to your panel for the great service. I'm a physician assistant intern, currently rearing goats and guinea fowls as a part-time job. As a starter in the field, I have bought 10 goats and 70 guinea fowls. Should I increase the size of my animals by buying more to add, or I should manage what I have for now for it to grow? I'm sure this is something that... Um, um, Doris may want to attempt later. But I'll take one more person <coughs> from Zoom and then we'll go for a break. When we come back, it's questions and answers and comments throughout till the end of the show. We want to hear from you. So um, there's a hand up. Is it Daniel? Daniel with a headphone. Yes, Daniel, please switch on your mic and go ahead with your question. Let's I, try to be as brief I as possible do. so that others can also get the chance. Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, uh, most most of the questions I had earlier have, have already been answered. So I just want to say thank you for Joe. You you really asked the questions that I would have asked. So so thank you, and I'm enjoying the program. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Daniel. That gives another person the opportunity to ask a question or pass a comment before we go for the break. So uh, if you are ready, delight them. If you are ready, I can come to you uh, to ask your question. If nobody has a question, then. I'll come here for one quick reaction, then uh, go for hello. a break. Mm -hmm. let, let me let me make, make a comment on Jeffrey's submission. Mm -hmm. Ken, so, go ahead. Uh, uh, I want him to add the chiefs and the custodians of the land to what about uh, stakeholders forum they are trying to form. You know, there are the people who own the land, and uh, they should be encouraged to appreciate the fact that look, uh, land banks for farming. Will also be a source of income for them and not just real estate so uh jeffrey i think you you add that one onto your your agenda you have okay that's great so i'll read some comments and then we'll go for a break when we come back can you can uh, i quickly talk go ahead something on the same to mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. on jeffrey mm -hmm. yes can i yeah you can go ahead davis yeah so so jeffrey yeah thank you very much but the issue here is not about the, the being the custodian of the land or what? But, but I, I I like it when you said that you need to document your your lands uh, so that it means it becomes secured and that is exactly the fundamental thing that we've been saying. And uh, we are looking at what I'm saying is the urban land methodology should be different from the rural because the process in which you go through before even registering the land being leased or is so cumbersome that. Uh, it's like you are going to build uh, a, a house in this level and you farming in the so called It's the same. You understand? And that is where we think that we, we should look at because if there will be any break somewhere for somebody to challenge, because if I get my land in January and I want to start planting in May, it should be May. So it means I need to start my process by my land preparation and other things. But before I do that, I need to make sure the land is secure. Uh, by the, the documentation, soil tests, and other things. So this is where we are looking at. Look, these are policy and regulatory issues, and we think that 
look, the urban land methodology, the process should be entirely different from, from that the rural. rural farm. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Davis. So we'll go for a break, but before that, uh, I'll read some three messages so that our guests here will think about the answers for us. Um, Dinah says, how do you manage the smell of your poultry farm? I am into animal husbandry. So that is one question. Doris, you are getting a lot of questions. <laughs> this one goes to Davis. He says, I'm Abraham in Somonia. I want to venture into coconut farming in the eastern region. Ask Mr. Kobo where I can get the best variety of seedlings for my plantation. This one says, hello, Kojo. Please, can I do agribusiness, especially poultry as a student, because it is only during vacations that I'll be at home to take care of the animals. I'm sure Doris will have some thoughts to share with you. And this one says, good afternoon. I'm really enjoying this insightful program. Please ask your panelists, how do I venture into ginger and garlic business as a starter? And how well can our soil support it? Thank you. Kasim Ibrahim Yao in Warianga in the Upper East region with that question. I'm sure um, Davis or um, William or Ken would want to answer the ginger question. And a final question before we go for the break. I am Eric Kosa watching live from the state of Israel. What insurance package would you advise me to choose for my farm? Also, how do we engage vegetable farming in the cities as a youth? How do we engage in vegetable farming in the cities as youth where, where there is shortage of water supply? Uh, on insurance, I'm sure William will have some ideas. And on the vegetables, anybody who wants to pick on it can answer that. Let's go for a quick break. When we return, we'll answer your questions, take more questions, take more comments from our audience on Zoom. All those who are attempting to log in on Zoom, you can still log in. We'll be glad to have you to pass your comments, share your insights, and also ask your questions here on the City Business Festival, Agribusiness Forum. It's sponsored by APSA Bank Ghana Limited. And as Jeffrey said, APSA's interest rate on farming, no. It's low. <laughs> so you may want to talk to William and APSA later. And it's supported by the GIPC, powered by CTFM and CTTV. Quick break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Managing Director of Inclune Industries Limited. We are a food processing company. We've been able to survive all this well, this 78 years, because of the stable political environment we're experiencing in Ghana. Skilled labor has also been available because of the numerous universities we've had. Um, we've also expanded our production, and this is possible because of increased more raw materials that we've been able to acquire in Ghana. I would urge investors, both local and foreign investors, to invest in companies like Inclino and others to grow in Ghana, grow with Ghana. COVID-19 has changed the world. But despite the challenges we face, the spirit of Africanacity is still alive. It's in the tenacity of the men and women who are still keeping us safe and keeping us going. It's in the creativity you use to find new ways to work, teach, do it all, and stay together, even if you're apart. And it's in the ingenuity of all those who are making a difference. Thank you to everyone still getting things done. Your Africanacity inspires us.
Welcome back. This is the City Business Festival Agribusiness Forum. The theme is simple. Very, very simple. How do you create a career in agribusiness? It could be your main job. It could be your side gig. But how do you start? And we've brought four people with years of experience to share insights. Dorisia Ose is an animal scientist. She's mentioned so far the kind of things you can do in the short term, medium term, and the long term, and the value chain. William Nete is an agribusiness specialist, and he's the head of agribusiness with Absa Bank Ghana Limited. He's giving us a reason why you should see agribusiness as a gold mine and how you should approach funding. He'll be telling us more. Ken Adi is also an international agribusiness consultant, and he's also told us the opportunities for growth and opportunities for entry into agribusiness. He's mentioned the crop area when it comes to vegetables and the various things you can do and how you should read more about it, develop your skill and expand. Now, Davis is talking about the macro, talking about because we know a lot of um, people in the policy space are also watching so that they can also create that space for you and I to start our career in agribusiness. But before we went for the break, we had a lot of your questions and we'll attempt to answer your questions now and take more later. So I'll come back to my panelists in the studio. Doris, you have taken some of your questions. People want to know, somebody wants to know how they can approach snail farming. Somebody says that he's got 10 goats and 10 guinea fowls. Should he buy more animals or he should let this grow? Um, others also want to know um, stuff in ginger. Somebody wants to know about how to manage the smell of their poultry farm. These are questions on animal husbandry for you. So I want you to attempt to answer these before I go to another panelist. Okay. Um, you first of all asked, someone asked the question about the health benefits of the rabbit meat. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Rabbit meat is very healthy. Mm -hmm. It's slow. It has low cholesterol, low sodium, and the protein is very high. Is uh, they recommend it for those with heart diseases? Okay. You know, so it's very healthy, mm. and I advise everyone to to, to try it. Especially okay. with jollof. Yes, <laughs> jollof. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the the, the person who said uh, he's into part time rearing. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. If you don't really have time, it is not advisable to even venture into the part time because depending on the person you have there, they might tell you, if you don't go there often, they might tell you, oh, the, the goat is dead. But then when you go, you don't even see the head of the goat. You see, so I, I will advise, since it's a part time, he should keep what he has. Mm -hmm to you know for them to grow gradually and yeah. then when he he really wants to go into full time then he upgrades it okay yeah and then the how to manage the smell of of the uh, the dropping yeah and the, there is a, a product at animal research institute emo you know you can sprinkle it and then it takes up the smell. Mm. So uh, she can come to Animal Research Institute and then get some. So with emo, even with emo, people who want to have some poultry at home or have a piggy or any animal at home can rear animals at home and not worry about the smell too much because you have developed the technology yes. at Animal Research yes. for that. Yes. Okay, yes. somebody also asked about grass cutter, how they can venture into grass cutter where they can get training and um, grass cutter to buy for um the training they can get them at animal research institute as mm -hmm. i said earlier and then the breeding stock when you come to the institute we can get you breeding stock to start but before you start you will still need to have putting your your cages in place mm -hmm. your you know you have access to water and everything you know you have to put in place 
what you have to do, how you are going to go about with your managerial uh, practices and everything before you venture into it. Mm. You can't just go and then say you want to venture into it. But then with the training, if you want to go into it, you come to Animal Research Institute, you will be trained okay. to know. And then one person also said uh, he's, he only comes home when he's on vacation. Yes, and he wants to do poetry. He can go in for the short term, um, like the broiler, mm -hmm. you know, about six weeks. You know, and sometimes you'll be vacation able... is two months. Yes, mm -hmm. two months. So if you want to get, have the grilled type, the very soft ones, by six weeks, you can get your one kilo to 1.5 kilo uh, meat. So he can go into that. And then he can also go into quills. Okay. Okay, because they start laying within six weeks. Yeah. Mm. So if you're a student, vacation, you, you get some quills or some broilers, you raise them for six weeks. Then the last week before you go to school, no? yes. you get a grill in front of your house. <laughs> you grill, you sell, you raise one, you go to school. I think it can work for a lot of yeah. people. Yeah. Okay, now um, I'll go to Mr. Kobo with his set of questions. Abraham wanted to know how he can get the best variety of seedlings for coconuts in the eastern region. And he also wants to know whether the eastern region is a good place to do coconuts. Davis. Yeah, thank you very much. So, Abraham, if he's listening to me, I think the, uh, they currently have the Coconut Federation where they have the Nursery Operators Association because, you know, the Tree Crop Development Authority uh, is going to be implemented soon. And once that is done, it is anybody within the, uh, those commodities, you need to be either belong to any association or not, or you, you, you are, you are, you lose out. Mm -hmm. So Abraham should look for, I mean, I'll give him a contact later to get in touch with the, uh, the Federation and the Coconut Nursery Operators. Okay. And yes, it's a region. You know, the, uh, we have 16 regions in the country. Out of the 16 regions, uh, you can do coconut in 14 regions. Yeah, so, so that tells you uh, uh, coconut can be done in this region. Most Which regions can we not do the coconuts? Come again? Which regions is coconut not really viable? You, you no, say not, mm -hmm. not where the very place is dry. The true north, the upper east, and the north region, you, you can't really do coconut. And then the north savannah, east, the, the savanna you can still do coconut because okay. if you look at the vegetation, mm -hmm. you can still do coconut. Yes. Okay. So, I'm coming back to Zoom, but um, I've got some extra questions here, and we also have a lot of uh, people on Zoom now. People are asking where they can even get seedlings to plant when it comes to the vegetables. And there's one person on Zoom that I want to go to. He's a lawyer and he's also into agric. And recently he started something called the Citizens um, Nursery. Citizens Nursery. So I want to ask him, you, Richard Nunepeku, you have been doing agric at least for the past five to ten years and you're also a lawyer. People want to know, and you, you do a lot of um, vegetables, people want to know where they can get um, planting material for vegetables. Your general advice for people on that particular score. Richard, on Zoom. Okay. Thank you, Kojo, and thank you to your viewers and listeners. Uh, what we've started uh, called the Citizens Nursery Bank is an initiative that seeks to provide the direct support in terms of seedlings to dwellers in the cities, especially Accra, Tema, and Kaswa environs. Our objective is to ensure that they have seedlings that they can start their home uh, growing with. We're using the platform as well as a training or more like a growing support platform so that over the period, people can also get the skills that is required for any commercial farming venture they want to go into. Uh, we've been doing this uh, from the last three months. Uh, we've just currently completed our second batch of supply. We've supplied over 15,000 seedlings to homes in, in these uh, demarcated areas. We want to continue this initiative. So for those who will be interested in, in our support, they can follow us on Facebook. We use Facebook predominantly. Our WhatsApp lines are available on, on that channel for, for them to and get uh, the seedlings delivered to them when we, we but as we, we think it's an opportunity for, for homeowners in the, in the city, space or you don't have space, because we also 
uh, put on sale, some uh, planting boxes that comes with black soil. And on a weekly basis, we, we provide growing tips for people to go through the process. So, 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 sure so, next, so uh, you, are, you are giving people free seedlings when it comes to vegetables, right? But generally, people yes, who are yes, not within Accra, so predominantly, people who are not within Accra, people who are not within Tema, and people across the country, I know you do a lot of farming. When it comes to getting input for vegetable farms, what are the avenues across the country where people can get some of these inputs? Are they supplied by the government? Are they sold? What, 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 what are the avenues? I'm sure uh, from the private sector uh, angle, there are agrochemical shops that, that are dotted across the country that supply some of these certified seeds. But I also know that through the uh, Ministry of Food and Agriculture uh, District offices, you can get assistance as well to, to get some of these certified seeds either under the planting for food and job program or for accredited dealers across across the country so people should take advantage of of, of the contacts that are available at the district agric offices mm -hmm. to source the, the right seed because seed seed is, is all you have when when you go into farming if your seed is bad you don't expect any output so but, a good but, seed will, 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 with the right agronomic practices is, is the only guarantee form of returns if, if you are looking at farming on a commercial scale. But the ones you give out are for free. So if people go to your Facebook page, they can order free seedlings to grow in their homes, right? Which is Citizens Nursery Bank. Yes, if you look for the Citizen Nursery, yes, Citizen Nursery Bank on Facebook, uh, we, we, we will assist you to get uh, free seedlings. If you are within Accra, Tema, and Kaswa area, to start growing your, your vegetables at home and own the process. Because the concern over the period has been the, the lack of knowledge or traceability for some of the vegetables we have in our supermarket and distribution value chain. So okay. if we will be able to get uh, people to own the process and control what they grow and know how they grow them, that confidence in, in, in our vegetable value chain will be restored. Thank you very much, Richard. I brought Richard in because he is a lawyer. He used to be a salesman with a technology company and he ventured into a Greek. And sometimes people think that a Greek, as, as Ken and David said earlier, if you have nothing to do, that's when you go into a Greek. But he's a successful lawyer in his chambers who is doing a Greek profitably and actually is helping other people do it. So if you really think that a Greek is difficult, it is. But if you think that there's no opportunity for you, there is an opportunity for you and you can venture into a Greek and make some very good, um, do some very good business and make money. Now, um, I'll read a few more messages, then I'll come back to you. But, okay, William, you wanted to say something. Let me come to you. On the, on the issue of insurance, uh -huh. um, so we have the Ghana Agric Insurance Pool that mm -hmm. does insurance for mm -hmm. uh, both animal and, and crops, and anyone looking for insurance can contact them. Some of the uh, insurance companies themselves are now doing agri and they and they depending on what um, you are looking for they may be able to help but the the issue is not just about insurance but how we are trying to mitigate risk so what are the other areas that we as financial institutions are looking to mitigate risk and and like I mentioned there should be some we, we're looking at partnerships mm -hmm. partnerships with development partners partnership with uh, other agencies that can come in and and mitigate some of the risk for us and and based on that we look at the interest rates and then and then work within those those ranges uh, the warehouse receipt system is there where you can you can deposit your your uh, grains and then you 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 go for invoice discounting mm -hmm. you can do you know supplies and then and then come back to us to uh, uh, you know finance the receivables and all that so there are there are options that we are bringing in just to make sure that people within the agribusiness sector can, can get financing. It's not just coming for the hard loan, but also other, I mean, when it comes to trade, what are some of the uh, available uh, uh, financial instruments that are available for you to, to, to go out there and then import or, or, or export? So these are all things that we are doing. We work with uh, OVCF, which is the Outgrower Value Chain uh, Fund. And that helps us to uh, take care of, of outgrowers within within contracts, within uh, uh, set systems. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what we are encouraging. And I, I like uh, what uh, uh, David said about 
it's not just about the marketing, but also going to contracts. Yeah. And and when those are in place, mm -hmm. it makes the financing easier. We can sit down and then model something and, and, and come up with uh, okay. the best solutions. Wisdom's hand is up on Zoom. So I'll take Wisdom and we'll use the last few minutes to wrap up. I'll come back to the studio and each person will have about two and a half minutes to give us their final thoughts. To speak the gospel according to starting your career in Agric into the lives of people. And if there's anything um, unattended to, you can touch on that. So Wisdom, um, go ahead with your question and your contribution quickly. All right. Good afternoon and thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I've been so much inspired. Um, actually, um, I completed Ken University last year and then the project I did has something to do with tomatoes. I was so glad when the issue of tomatoes came up. I studied biochemistry. And I realized that the conversation has just been in um, regard, regards to the products and all that. But I was, in my research, I came to realize that um, even though um, the products are equally important, the health of the people that are dealing with these things equally matter. So I assessed Fangalos on tomato soda in a Binchi market. And one of the things I came across was that most of the um, vendors in tomatoes had nail infections. Okay. As a result of the hand picking and things like that, mm -hmm. so um, I find I find this potential business opportunity to come up with um, an anti-infectious hand protective glove. Okay. I studied by chemistry, so my question is that if um, a young adult get graduated from Kenya University last year wants to start something like this, um, are some people there we can contact? Are there some people we can contact, maybe mm -hmm. or some places we can reach out to for help or something like that? Okay. That's a good question, and that's a good thing you are doing. Dominic, we'll, we will contact you after this show to see how we can assist you skill uh, when it comes to your business. Alistair, your hand is up. Um, please go ahead. Unmute. Unmute your mic and go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, good, good afternoon to you, Kojo, and your wonderful team. Uh, my regards to Ken and uh, uh, Kobo. Um, my question is straight to our colleague from the bank, just asking, what kind of package do they have for young people who wants to go into the sector? Because um, <laughs> most of these banks, I know they are products, but then it is um, a general product where they want almost everybody, and they are usually looking at those big weights that would want to come, looking at the returns that it comes with. Do they have any specific package for young people or institutions like schools and colleges who wants to go into any particular production within the sector? Okay, Alistair, that's a good question. I'll pick Wisdom Dominic quickly before I come back to the studio. Wisdom, unmute your mic and go ahead, sir. Wisdom Dominic? I guess um, Wisdom is not ready. So let me just read um, some messages, then we'll wrap up here. And the thing is, um, for all viewers, agribusiness is a big space. Two hours actually cannot exhaust everything. But seeing my guests nod their heads, it means that beyond this conversation, they are ready to assist you with more information. So we put together something that will help you get in touch with these people so that they can help you further. And one thing I can assure you is that CTFM and CTTV are also going into farming. So you'll be seeing a lot of our experiences shared on radio and TV to encourage you to learn more about farming so that you can also do better in the space. Now, Mabel Kwashi of Aquatic Foods Limited says, Kojo, there are so many business ideas within the agribusiness space. I left the bank after 20 years to go into fish farming, and it didn't go well for me. But I got a great product still in the aquaculture sector. I'm now producing fish sausage and boneless kobe. In aquaculture, there are so many business ideas along the value chain. Fertilizer from the guts, oils, leather for bags and shoes for the tilapia skin, etc. Let us not only think of the primary products. That is Mabel Kwashi sharing her thoughts. Now, um, good afternoon, Kojo. I'm Ernest. I have plans of going into poultry, but my major issue is land acquisition. My question is, how can I acquire a land with all these disputes across the country? Um, please ask Madame Doris what the research institution is doing about breeds of animals like cattle, sheep, etc. So many questions, but we would have to wrap it up with a final round of comments from our guests. And the last one is um, Clifford. He says, My grandpa left a van land in Afram Plains, Kwame Krum and Aveme. I want to start pepper farming, but I need investors. This is Clifford. So we have about eight more minutes to go. We'll just wrap up. Um, if we couldn't get your question, those on Zoom, just type your questions. We'll get our panelists to give us answers for you. 
and those on WhatsApp, we also get our panelists to send you answers on WhatsApp. So I'm going to start from Ken, then I'll come to Davis, come to um, um, Doris, and end with William because he's the money man. <laughs> so Ken, um, you've heard various <laughs> submissions and questions. Within a minute and a half, please give me your final responses to some of these things and your final thoughts. Yeah. Thank you, Koyo, again. Um, I believe we've had a lengthy discussion in connection with the group business as a whole. Now, especially if those of you who want to do vegetables, if you can't do anything at all, try your hands at a hobby time. As you have uh, potted flowers, start with potted vegetables. It's possible to work it out. We can even, we even have uh, some small drip irrigation kits with a size of about 30 meters, which will cover some space in your house, which is going to help you go ahead. Those of you who enter any type of crop production push will appreciate the type of products you use. I mean, use the correct agrochemicals, seek correct advice, get the correct seeds, and uh, uh, get the best agronomic uh, information. And uh, you'll be good to go. This, this is what, what I have, or, or, or what you call it. And we'll be available to support anyone who comes our way for the ministry advice. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Ken. Ken is the CEO for Cardi Ventures. He's an international agribusiness consultant. And he shared his thoughts with us today on the Business Festival Agribusiness Forum. Mr. Davis Kobo, over to you. Yeah. yeah, so thank you very much and uh, thank you for the opportunity. But, but before I go on, uh, let me read something to you. Um, the view of Africa youth on private sector says 93% of youth believe they need to update their current education and skills to adapt to the labor market. And this is where I come in with the, how do you call it, the, the, the uh, skill sets in agriculture. Uh, what I want to say is, yes, agri is profitable, but then we also need uh, government to be fully committed. Because what will happen is, if we build, and uh, we select just 200 and build such people, I mean, provide everything, the necessary uh, capital for them, in the next two years, we will change the dynamics of, uh, how do you call it, uh, this country, and uh, start exporting heavily. Again, uh, if you look at the trend, like I said, COVID-19 has exposed a lot of uh, 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 fallouts in the agri sector, which we need to take advantage of, okay. uh, to use Africa as a production hub and also add uh, value. So to curtail uh, the 34% profitable losses, which is $4 billion, mm -hmm. and also to curtail the 90% importation of, how do you call it, tomatoes, which happens to be job uh, created export. Mm. Uh, so this is my advice. Mr. Davis Kobo is the 2009 National Best Farmer and currently I believe you are still the chairman of the Best Farmer Award Winners Association and also sure. the African sure. Coconut Federation and a lot of other um, groups. Mr. Davis Kobo, thank you very much for joining us today thank as you, well. Sir. Now I'll come to you Doris for your final thoughts. Um, someone asked the question. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Animal Research Institute, we have breeders mm -hmm. there. So the various animals, we breed them. We want to breed them to improve their, you know, to, to improve their, you know, disease resistance, uh, to improve the their, of meats. yes, to get very mm -hmm. meaty animals. So we are there. We, we are doing that job. And then, yes, a lady spoke about the fish. Yes. Yes, rabbit skin can be used as leather and okay. it's very hardy. Mm -hmm. You know, we just need to have the right, uh, the material, the, the right, uh, mm -hmm. is it a uh, chemicals mm -hmm. or things to mm -hmm. put them together? To okay. do it. Yes, it's very good. Great. Yes, and then, um, yes, uh, experience from it, yes. Um, those who want to go into animal rearing will have to, first of all, as I will always say it, you know, you need to have the skill, you need to have the passion, first of all. Doris, for, for, for the time constraints, okay, they should passion, come to animal research. Yes, mm -hmm. come to animal research and then speak to other farmers to experience farmers, but then come to animal research for the training. Doris mm -hmm. Yaose is a, is a research scientist at Animal Research Institute. By the end of this year, she will be Dr. Doris Yaose. So let's look out for that. And congratulations in advance. I receive it. Money man, <laughs> William Nete. 
Yes, thank you, Kujo, for the opportunity. Um, I'm very certain that financial institutions are willing to support the agribusiness um, sector. We've, we've moved a long way, and, and there's a lot of investment that is going into that area. Come and speak to us. But like I said earlier, for, from APSA, our point of view is that we are linking the dreams that you have to financial possibilities and financial opportunities. And we want to bring your possibilities to life. Come speak to us. It doesn't matter where you are at. And, I, and you also have to identify where you are at so that when we are talking to you and advising that, look, this is the best form of financing for your uh, um, business, you would understand that because you need that. And at the end of the day, we are certain that your business would grow and you, you'll be the beneficiary. Mr. William N N N Nati, Nati. Uh, Nati is the head of agribusiness at APSA Bank Ghana Limited. If you need anything on agribusiness financing, he's your go-to guy. Okay. Go find him and his team and they will assist you. My name is Kojo Akoto Boateng. Um, this has been the City Business Festival Agribusiness Forum. There's, there are a lot of opportunities in agribusiness. Just go to the city business, uh, citynewsroom.com, click on Business Festival. We have all these videos and this week's on-air programming on agribusiness so that you can learn a whole lot more. Let's do this together to create wealth for ourselves and also to create wealth for Ghana. This program, the Business Festival, is sponsored by APSA Bank Ghana Limited with support from GIPC and is powered by CTFM and City TV. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've learned something new. Agribusiness is for you. So make that move now and let's do this together. Thank you for watching. Keep watching CTFM. Yeah, keep watching City TV <laughs> and keep listening to CTFM. God bless you. Bye for now.